Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment of our program is brought to you by A.G. Heinz Company, family owned for 100 years. That is four generations of the Heinz family. They are located right in downtown Knoxville. Uh, they are always on the cutting edge of new building materials. They also have all the tools and equipment you could possibly need if you're in a home improvement project, a do-it-yourself project. Do, my, do me a favor and check out aghines.com. Call them right there or go by and see them where they're still doing the mask thing, the social distance thing. A.G. Hines Company, just a terrific East Tennessee company. All right, let's take a look at player grades. All right, now what you're looking at, these are the offensive grades from profootballfocus.com. We can debate how much we agree with those or not, but they have scouts that go and look at every single play of every single game. What you're looking at. On the left is where each player ranks at Tennessee. Now, these are just players who have played 100 plays. I had to have a cutoff somewhere. So these are guys who have played 100 plays. You see the player. You see his position. You see the number of plays he has played. You see the pro football focus grade. And then whether or not he is ranked in the top 100 nationally at his position. Down below, you see what those grades mean. So 80 above is very good. 90 above is elite. Tennessee has none of those on offense right now, according to pro football focus. They only have three players on offense who are above average starters. Josh Palmer, Trey Smith, Brandon Johnson. All right, so you look at that, and your best player is Josh Palmer, who ranks the 25th best receiver in the country. Trey Smith, only the 35th best guard. 35th best guard in their scoring. Then you get down into the guys who are just average starters, and then at the bottom, you see below average starters, and look at the very bottom, Wanya Morris, Darnell Wright. Not in the top 100 in terms of offensive tackles. Gentlemen, when you look at these numbers, what stands out to you? First thing that jumps out at me is Trey Smith's score because I've always thought that Trey Smith was an elite guard. Um, just watching, obviously on television, I don't think he has stood out this year like he has in years past. I mean, in, in years past, he just jumped out at you off the screen. Um, I think that's the big one, and then I think go down to the bottom and you've got two two big time prospects that some people had even said man you just signed two first round draft pick tackles and they're barely even starters yeah i mean in terms of their grades they are just a couple of points above what they would call backup level performance now I, I, that's yeah. a that's a bad thing that's a worrisome thing one of the things there are a couple of things that stand out to me first off and we've talked about this a little bit. So the position hit hardest by COVID on this Tennessee football team was the offensive line. And you're seeing some bad grades on the offensive line. The other thing is with Trey Smith, he's, he's dealing with a little bit of a shoulder problem. And I wonder how much that's affected his play. He doesn't look like the dominant blocker that we've seen in the past. So that stands out to me. Uh, one other one would be Eric Gray. I think he's played better at the level he's been graded. But they may be dinging him for his inability in pass protection. And we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah, that, that's in there. Vince, your thoughts on this? And here, and here uh, you follow, you're a numbers guy mm -hmm. like me, and I, everybody now is following pro football focus. Certainly their pro grades, right. which I've said on this show, I think their pro grades are easier to grade because you're only talking 16 games maximum a week. Right. Who is it doing the grading for yeah. all of these games? Mm -hmm. That said, I don't think these are complete nonsense. Where are you on buying into the, their grades and not buying into their grades? Well, I think it's a, it's a source of information. I wouldn't use it as gospel. Uh, I know, you know some, the, some football people look at it and say they don't believe in it at all. Um, and then others have probably put too much stock in it. I think it's somewhere in between. It is useful information, just like a lot of numbers, but you can spin them in different ways and you just don't know exactly what the context and what they're looking at, think the accuracy, things like that. But a, a few things that jump out to me, and the numbers are consistent with what you see with the eye test. And that is what we've complimented Jeremy Pruitt and his staff for last year, especially during the win streak, was player development. And you don't see it with the eye test, and these numbers show it's not getting better for a lot of these players. And I think that's a problem. Another thing is star power. They don't have star power. And in year three. Right, in year three, absolutely. Difference makers. I mean, we talked about that needing that for the pass rush, talked about needing it on offense. They don't have stars, difference makers. Henry T, which we'll get to later, is thought of him, him and Trey Smith as your two best players on the team. But then you start looking for the second best player on that side of the ball, and you kind of struggle a little bit other than maybe a Josh Palmer. So I think those are some things that the numbers sort of 
uh, coincide with the with the eye test. But on offense, they have star power on the offensive line. Star, yeah, your star power, star power. In, in expectations. Yeah. But we have star rankings. Yeah, your star rankings. Yeah, right. Right. Are, These are five star guys. Playing. I like it. Yeah. 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 All right. You know, and I, and I think, you know, I, I don't know how they go through every college football game and put their numbers mm -hmm. together. But here's the thing. Their numbers say that their offense is very average. Their offense is very average. So, yeah. so I think exactly what Vint says. With this, what the numbers say and what you see on the field pretty much line up perfectly to me. I mean, that is an very mm -hmm. average looking offense. As bad as the offense was last year at times, even mm -hmm. during their win streak, the numbers this year are worse in many yeah. statistical categories. Yeah. Let, me, let me quickly go ahead and show you, this is from SEC StatCat, another, another site that, that breaks down game by game, play by play, drive by drive. Uh, this is Tennessee's play share for the year. And the main thing is it tells you what, what uh, Jim Chaney is calling. 22% of the time he's calling inside zone reads. So that's 76 runs on the year. Uh, inside zone rate. That's, that's the basis of your offense. Then you got shot variations. Across the SEC, I didn't see that in the top three anywhere else. That's basically fades and goes. And I don't think mm -hmm. that surprises anybody. Those 50 50 balls, it's just taking mm -hmm. shots. And then you got outside zone. Uh, does this tell you anything? I mean, <laughs> there's just, when, when your offense, the second most favorite thing you do is just taking shots. That tells you right there you're a very limited offense, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what it tells me. I, I don't know why you run that many zone plays, uh, zone reads, because you don't have a quarterback to run the football. If well, you're going to run that offense, you need Josh Dobbs or somebody can run the football. But even to in me, the past yeah. part of that, Jimmy, they don't really have a threat or a great decision maker for just the pass option out of the RPO. Which, which yeah, the thing right. is, Tennessee only runs about 25% RPO, right. uh, which is pretty mm -hmm. low for the SEC. So it may be that they – don't want Garantano making that decision. I tell you what, I see when I hear numbers like that, it's an indictment of your offensive line. I mean, you you run basically, you know, not the same play every time when you're running that inside zone, and then you take a shot. Okay, if you had a really good offensive line, boy, you can do anything you want because we right. know we can make holes instead. Eh, we're limited. And so right. I think offensive line indictment. Okay, mm -hmm. when we come back, we're going to take a look at where Tennessee has success running the football, which gap, behind which people, and also pass protection. Get ready to rub your eyes. Come on back on the sports force.